Hello and welcome to Huddersfield Town's preview show in association with Sports Broker ahead of today's game against Rotherham United. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Huddersfield Town forward Josh Caroma and Stephen Chicken from the Huddersfield Examiner. How are you both? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Perfect. That's good to hear. Um, Steve, I'll I'll start with you. Um, We won't dwell on the result midweek against Norwich, but this is uh, a big, big game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, obviously, you know, I understand you, you don't want to, you know, sit on that result, but it's, you know, it's, it is something that, that town are going to have to bounce back from. Um, yeah. Rodham, of course, coming off a disappointing result of their own as well. Uh, the three nil defeat that they had to Wickham last time out, which, you know, was a big blow to them because they are scrapping and trying to get out of it. And those games in hand don't mean anything if they're, if they're not picking up points. Um, so it's a, it's a huge game. Uh, I think there is a bit of a feeling that, um, that if town get a win out of this, then that moves them a long way towards safety, possibly even realistically gets them safe. I'm sure they get as many points on the board as they possibly can before the end of the season. Um, but I think that is the prevailing feeling, certainly that, that we have, and, and I think that a lot of fans have, um, which, you know, there's no, no, make no bones about it. It does put a lot of pressure on the game, um, but it's pressure for both sides. And I think it's whoever will get through uh, and sort of deal with that pressure best will end up coming out with the points. Yeah, obviously, um, Rotherham are among the chasing pack. Josh, uh, eight points behind us in in the table. Is there a sense in in the dressing room and in training um, that that this is a game that that we have to win? Yeah, I mean, um, not just the game. I know everyone wants to react from the result on Tuesday, so we all know it's an important game, and the boys just want to get out playing and make up for the result that happened on Tuesday. So not just because of the importance on the game of us staying up, but I think more for the fans just to make it up to them. Yeah, and you're back in training now, obviously, um, as well, which is fantastic news. Um, a, a long time uh, for you to have to kind of wait to be back amongst the lads, but but how's that been for you and how are you feeling? Um, yeah, I've trained for the last week or so, so I'm feeling fitter every day, Feel my hamstrings feeling good. Um, I get a bit leggy at the moment because I've been out for so long. But, um, yeah, training's been going well. I just want to get back out there now and help the team stay up. Yeah, it's got to be hard to kind of get get used to that that match fitness after there's such a long period out. Mm. Yeah, um, it's not easy. But, um, I mean, the fitness, Cal, um, Cal Walsh and other Cal, they're amazing. Steve as well, they all... They're all helping me to get back to my full fitness. So hopefully it won't be too long till I'm back on the pitch. Yeah, and that'll be a, a welcome boost, won't it, Steve, when, when Josh is fit and ready to go? I yeah, think... I think the fans, obviously, the fans in particular have, have, have missed Josh, I think. And, and you know, it's it's no coincidence that... that after Josh picked up his injury, that, that the goals have, have been much harder to come by. You know, there's only been a handful of occasions where Town have managed to score more than one um, without Josh in the side. And I think sort of that, that X factor, that ability to, to come up with something out of nothing and do something unexpected has been uh, a big miss over the last few months. And I don't think there's there's much hiding from that. Um, obviously, the, the injuries to other players in sort of the, the wing positions as well haven't helped. Um, the force sort of a change of shape and and then you've you've lost yet more with with Harry Toffolo and Pippa being out recently so it's uh <laughs> never rage but it pours but I think obviously the sooner you can get as many players back as possible the better but I think Josh in particular and the, the goals that he brings could be uh could make a really big difference yeah I can imagine it's a bit been a bit strange um since that injury Josh, because obviously um, just just before you went out, we were we were doing really well. We were winning a lot of games at, at home, in particular, and then kind of soon soon after that period and the start of twenty twenty one, we we hit a, a bit of a rut. And I can imagine the the frustration that that you'll have had sitting in the physio room with the medical team, not being able to kind of help the lads get through those difficult spells. 
Yeah, I mean, um, it was great the start to the season we had, but um, once I got injured, I had to watch from afar, which is hard. Even if we was winning, winning would have made it better, of course. But the fact we was losing, I just wanted to be out there and help the boys. But it wasn't just me that was injured. We got um, quite a few injuries. I mean, Carell got a long-term injury, so he was as important as I was. And now Toffs is out, um, Rolando's injured and... We've just had, we've been unlucky with the amount of injuries we got, but um, fingers crossed everyone will be back towards the back end of the season so we can finish strong. Yeah, because there's a few people um, that we hope will be will be back soon. Steve, uh, Rolando Aarons obviously was, um, or Aarons I should say, um, featured for, for the B team uh, this week. Carol Iting put a, a video on his Instagram about being back in training too, which is a, a good boost alongside Hopefully, Josh not being too far away. Yeah, um, I mean, me and Rolando especially have been working together. He was um, a bit ahead of me due to his injury not being as bad as mine, which is a good thing. Um, so, yeah, Riz really wants to get back. He's been excellent in rehab since he's come back to training, been excellent. And the last couple of sessions, corral has been out there as well. So um, it's just a nice boost for not just us, the team as well, um, and hopefully the fans. It's good that, Steve, isn't it? Yeah. Th- yeah, obviously, the more, as I say, the more players you can get back, the better. And we've, we've had we've had a few come back. I think the things were sort of at the worst in, in January, February, where you had, where you were in sort of double figures with the number yeah. of injuries. We've even seen um, on Tuesday, we've even seen uh, Tommy Elphick back in a match day squad for the first time in 18 months, um, which was brilliant to see. It's just a shame that the, the occasion wasn't what it, it could have been for him. Um, but you know, that, that, <laughs> that is a, is a positive because I know that, I mean, I'm sure Josh can talk about this more, but you know, everyone we speak to will say what a model pro Tommy Elphick is and how brilliant he is as a character to be around the dressing room because he's been captain at pretty much every other club he's, he's been at. Um, I remember Danny Cowley once said that, that you know, Tommy Elphick can do whatever he wants when he hangs up his boots, whether that's director of football, coaching, management, whatever. So mm. I imagine that kind of character in the dressing room is, um, is you know, really useful to, to have around and is a good voice for particularly some of the younger players. On which the sort of the flip side of the injuries is that you know other players have had an opportunity to come into the side and make an impression, and I think we've seen we've seen that from you know Aaron Rowe has done well in certain games, for instance, and I thought on Tuesday the the one sort of small silver lining was Sober Thomas came off the bench and did yeah. reasonably well playing on on the wing, which is obviously competition for Josh, a player who's been <laughs> compared to. You several times um but he has you know potentially made himself an option for carlos at the weekend as well um so yeah just i mean the more the more players you have available obviously um the better everyone is because we've seen several players as well come back and in that in unbeaten run and say well just having players back in training just yeah. raises the level immediately um because you you've got more competition for places you're not you're not feeling like you're you're on the team sheet come what may yeah, we'll, we'll start with Tommy Elphick first, um, Josh. I can imagine for you, he, he kind of helped helped you get through that long term injury. He was just coming back himself. But what, what's he what's he like as a character? How's he helped you? Um, for me personally, he gave me a lot of advice, and I think the best advice he gave me was not to rush it. Um, don't rush coming back just because um, if I rush back and then it's not right and I re-injure because that's what he'd done. He'd come back, um, didn't do the same injury, done something else, then he was out for even longer. So I think that was the best advice he gave me. And just around the dressing room, he's just a leader. Um, So not even talking about the qualities he brings on the pitch, um, off the pitch, he's amazing. Everyone in the changing room respects him, respects what he's done in the game, respects what he's done for Huddersfield so far. And hopefully he can get a few games before the end of the season just to show that um, he can still play because I see him in training um, since I've been back and he still looks the same as he did before he got injured. So yeah, he's, he's, he is a really, really good character, isn't he, um, Stephen? He can add a lot of experience going into kind of the, the, the last few games of the season. Yeah, and I, I think that's, I mean, that, that can be a crucial thing when you're in 
in this position and you know the pressure is on um particularly for games like the like like this weekend where it's sort of that six pointer against a team that's that's you know also at that end of the table um and that can be really important um I think you you need it especially at moments like this I would imagine mm-hmm. just to help navigate through because obviously it's it's difficult and you know managers always talk about trying to sort of stay level emotionally um you know not to get too high when you've won and not to get too low after you've after you've lost and that's something that Carlos has alluded to uh several times this season as well and I think the older players naturally having been through things and experienced things a lot more are generally I think felt to be to be better at helping regulate that and that can translate to the rest of the team I would imagine yeah and you mentioned Sorba Thomas um a little bit earlier uh, I remember when when he signed Josh in his first interview, he said that he was told that he could be the the next Josh Caroma. Obviously, you, you're still young yourself. That must be a bit weird hearing that. Yeah, um, that is strange. I've never heard someone say they could <laughs> the next week. But um, no, since he's come in, um, in training, he's been good. Um, I'm sure he would have liked to get a few more games in the first team. But like when I first come... Um, You've just got to kind of conquer what's put out in front of you and he's doing that. I mean, he's been amazing in the B-team games. I've been watching them. Um, and yeah, when he come on against Norwich, he showed what he could do. So hopefully he could kick on from there. When you step up from that kind of level up to the championship, what what is the, the hardest thing? I mean, I imagine that mm. the level is just that much higher, but are there any other things that people maybe wouldn't think about with that? Um, I just think the main difference I notice is the physicality and the speed of the championship compared to a B team game. Because a B team game, you can to an extent go through the motions. I mean, you kind of get out whatever you put in, but in the champ, if you if you switch off for a second or you don't quite get to the ball, um, more likely you're going to concede. And I think in B team games, you might be able to get away with it, but in the championship you can't has he been picking your brains at all is that sober um i mean because i ain't been out there i haven't really mm. got to give him any advice but um i'm sure the players like fraser pritch um the older boys will be talking to him like they spoke to me when i um when i arrived here and when i was training with them every day so i'm sure um they'll be picking his brains. But when I get back, I'll sure try to help him out as much as I can. Yeah, they, they were really promising signs, weren't they? Um, I think he ran Max Max Aaron's uh, three or four times, didn't he, at Carrow Road? Yeah, I thought sort of the best move came from a, a Scott High ball over the top mm. and Sorba got onto it and not just sort of won the foot race to get onto it, but then sort of showed good feet to hold off a defender and, and get it into the box. Um, so it's little moments like that. Obviously, you know, a yeah. game like Tuesday, you, you, you're not looking at a complete 45 minutes or wh- whatever it was he played close to it. Um, you know, it's a difficult circumstance, but I think you, you need those those little moments of reassurance against quality opposition that that you can hang at this level. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's trying not to get carried away, I think, sometimes because, yeah. you know, We've seen a few young players who you think, oh, is that the moment they've broken through? Um, you know, we mentioned Aaron Rowe earlier and he's gone back onto the bench or Kieran Phillips came on and had that good outing against Middlesbrough and then has, you know, ended up coming back out the squad as more attacking options have, have come in, both from injury and, and from the transfer market. Um, and, you know, Matty Daly had that goal last year against Charlton um, and, you know, has been, you know, you thought, oh, is, does he kick on from here? But it, it doesn't work like that, I think. I think we we sort of, we have a tendency to try and look at these big moments and say, oh, that's the moment he emerged. And uh, I think football isn't like that when you're a young player coming through. It's it's much more up and down. Um, you know, you, you do have, you want to be on that trajectory overall, but it is steps forward and steps back and steps up and steps down. Um, but any, you, you take any positive sign you can really, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. And then focusing on the uh, Rotherham game now, um, Josh, obviously uh, you were at the club um, last year. Um, what what was Paul Warren uh, like and, and what can you tell us about kind of his, his style of play? Um, he's a great manager, um, great person, 
um, very easy to talk to, which you don't get with a lot of managers. Um, his style of play is very direct. He likes to um, hit the front man quickly. He likes to use his wingers a lot. Um, and yeah, he plays um, when he defends. He likes his teams to run press, quite similar to how we play off the ball. Um, but yeah, I think they're just more a direct team. They want to hit the front man, get the ball in the opposition half and then try and create something from there. Um, and I think their biggest strength is their height. So they're very, very good from set pieces defensively and attacking me. You could see that, couldn't you, Steve, earlier this year as well? Yeah, they really dug in. They made it really difficult for town um, at the, the New York Stadium. And I think they had a, I think their pass success rate in the second half was like 48% or something like that. They were just knocking it long because they had the goal advantage and they were just trying to hold town at bay. And fortunately, Pippa got through and, and forced a, a deflected goal in injury time. The point was the least that town deserved because they were completely in control of that game through the 90 minutes, but were, you know, conceded a, a goal perhaps they shouldn't have conceded and, um, and then they'd all going to share the spoils. So I think it's, uh, I mean, coming away from home, you would expect that Rotherham would 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 probably set up the same way, um, which makes it interesting for Carlos because I think the we've seen sort of the new, more pragmatic style has done, probably been more effective against sort of better teams, weirdly. You know, I think the better the performances in that, that unbeaten run have been against... Cardiff and QPR and Brentford and less impressive against Birmingham and Sheffield Wednesday, where I think you you would feel that they probably should have offered more in attack. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting one tactically, whether you do set up to just go for it um, because Rotherham are certainly going to be trying to make it very difficult for them to do that. So you need to maximise what you've got, I think. Do you think it'll be similar in, in terms of shape? Do you think it'll be a, a, a three at the back with, with wing backs? Or do you think because um, it, it's a game that, that kind of um, there's emphasis to, to really go and win and, and a, a chance uh, potentially to pretty much secure a championship um, status, do, do you think Carlos could revert to, to the 4-2 or 4-3-3 three, three system? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, he played uh, three four three, I think, at Rotherham last time. He had Hoggy mm-hmm. in the in in the back three. Um, yeah. So whether he looks to replicate that and say, do you know what, we'll do what we did against them last time because we were unlucky. Um, who knows? I mean, I think weirdly we've had a shortage of wingers all season. Um, and that sort of necessitated the move to wing backs. And now you'd probably look at it and say, actually, we're short on wing backs. Um, because I think I think DD is probably more natural as a fullback than a wing back. And um, you know, obviously with, with Pippa and Harry Toffolo missing, um, you've got, as I say, more natural fullbacks on the other side as well. If you're looking at the cover, if you're looking at, you know, Jaden Brown or um you know, the, the, um, I guess Aaron Rowe could play there. To be fair, but you've but you do have wing options. We talked about Sorba Thomas, um, Rolando Aaron's is on his way back. Played for the B team on on Wednesday, so whether he could get minutes, and obviously Isaac uh, Isaac and Benza played up front for the first half against Norwich. I think we I think it would be acknowledged that his his best position is on the wing, um, mm. on the right wing. And he's got a lot of uh, a lot of assists and, and a few goals playing out there this season. So weirdly, it feels like the better options might be on the wing than at wing back at the moment. But it's whether that fits into the, the system. Um, it's whether that fits into the, the, the plan you want to play against against Rotherham. So it's a, it's a difficult one to predict, as it has been for the last few weeks. Uh, would you expect something... Um, similar to kind of what you were used to playing under uh, Josh when when Rotherham come to to the John Smiths. Um, yeah, I mean we got a lot of wingers coming back now, so um, a lot of players coming back. So I think um, obviously not exactly the same personnel as when we played them before. So it could be difficult to replicate what we've done. But um, I mean the manager he analyzes it. He'll probably analyze every game they've played this season because he's just like that so I'm sure he'll pick the best shape for us to try and go and win the game 
what what's Carlos been like to to work under um, for you? Because yeah, you've really kind of hit new heights um, this year. You were probably playing um, some of the best football in in your career before before your injury. What what's he like, and, and how did he kind of help develop you into a, a, a top championship player? Um, for me personally, um, he's been. I can't say a bad word about him. He's helped me improve technically, physically, um, mentally. Um, yeah, he's just been amazing. Like he has a confidence in me that I haven't had in a long time. Um, he trusts me to play, which uh, I just tried to repay him for every time I was on the pitch. And I mean, um, even since I've been injured, he's still been talking to me. Um, making sure I've been okay. Um, and yeah, he's just, I can't say a bad word about him. That must be really good as a player. It must fill you with a, a lot of confidence, especially as you are coming closer now to, to being back. Yeah, I mean, um, sometimes when you get injured, you can feel like you've kind of just been forgotten about just because obviously the squad needs more attention than you do. But mm -hmm. um, I haven't felt like that from the day I got injured till now. Um, everyone's still been keeping me involved as much as possible. Everyone's been um, talking to me constantly. The manager's called me a few times. Um, Kyle Walsh has called me a few times. Players have called me. Um, so, yeah, it's just um, refreshing just to know you haven't been forgotten about and everyone wants you back as soon as possible. No, it's really good to hear. And I'm sure town fans... Uh, completely agree and want you back um, as soon as as soon as you can be. Um, Steve, just finally, um, this game. Uh, where where do you think the game could be won and lost? I think it's all about whether you can break down the Rotherham defence, and that's not to do them down. And you know, I'm sure they'll be you know looking for a goal. Um, they'll be looking to exploit set pieces and try and catch down on the counter attack if they can. You would expect based on what we saw earlier this season. Um, but I think it's it comes down to whether Town can break down that defence, which is something we've seen them struggle to do against low compact teams before. I think, to be honest, every team in the division struggles with that at times, and sometimes it's you need that first goal to force them to open up before you can obviously get your, your second. Um, and getting that first goal is always the most difficult bit against teams that, that play that way. So starting well is going to be crucial you know the first 20 minutes could be really instructive the the positive thing and it's again weird to say this after midweek is that town have actually actually have started games well generally speaking over the course of the season I don't think there's I think there's only Watford uh when I looked last week off the top of my head I'm, I actually don't have it on my screen for once uh, <laughs> I think I think when I looked at it last week there was only Watford that had scored more more goals in the first 15 minutes of games um so yeah, it's it's trying to get off to, to that good start and break down the opposition early. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Steve, Josh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, town fans, uh, you can watch the game on iFollow HTFC. Obviously, season card holders have free access to watch it. And if you're not a season card holder, then you can purchase a match pass for £10. Thank you for watching.